Definitions and Terminology, Level 2. In this video, we're going to practice classifying differential equations. Let's first classify ordinary differential equations. State the order of the given ordinary differential equation and determine whether the equation is linear or nonlinear. The quantity 1 minus x times y double prime minus 4x times y prime plus 5y equals cosine of x, where y equals f of x. Alright, first thing to notice is that we're told that y is a function of x. This means that the independent variable is x and a dependent variable is y. The first thing you always need to do is to identify the independent variable and dependent variable before you even attempt to classify the differential equation. The next thing I want you to notice is that this ODE is written using prime notation. We can also rewrite this ODE using Leibniz notation as follows. Recall that the advantage of using this notation is that it explicitly shows the independent variable x and the dependent variable y. In any case, you can use either form as long as you keep track which variable represents the dependent and independent variable. Alright, let's first classify the order of the ODE. Recall that the order is the highest derivative of the equation. In this ODE, we have two derivatives, a second derivative and a first derivative. The highest of these two would be the second derivative, so we classify this ODE as second order. Next, we need to identify if the ODE is linear or nonlinear. In general, the procedure in determining if an ODE is linear in form is as follows. We first check to see if the dependent variable y and its derivatives are linear in form, meaning are they raised to the power of 1. Looking at the dependent variable y and its derivatives, we see that they are all raised to the power of 1. If they were raised to the power of a number other than 1, like 2 or negative 3, then this ODE would have been nonlinear. Next, we need to check if the products of the dependent variable y and its derivatives are solely in terms of the independent variable x. Looking at the product of the second derivative, we see that it's the quantity 1 minus x, which is solely in terms of the independent variable x. In addition, the product of the first derivative is also in terms of the independent variable x. And lastly, the dependent variable y contains the constant 5. If any of these expressions contain the dependent variable y or its derivatives, then this ODE would have been nonlinear. Lastly, we need to check for transcendental functions, such as trigonometric functions, exponential functions, and logarithmic functions, and make sure they contain only the independent variable x. In this ODE, we see that we have a cosine of x term. The argument contains the independent variable x. If it contained the dependent variable y, then this ODE would have been classified as a nonlinear ODE. Since all three criteria are met, we conclude that this ODE is linear in form. We can classify this equation as a second order linear ODE. Notice that transcendental functions are technically nonlinear functions, but keep in mind that the determining factor for an ODE to be linear is if the transcendental functions solely contain the independent variable in the argument. This is why you need to identify the dependent and independent variable first before you attempt to classify an ODE. Alright, let's try the next example. x times the third derivative of y with respect to x minus the first derivative of y with respect to x raised to the power of 4 plus y equals 0. Alright, this time we're given an ODE using Leibniz notation. If you like, you can rewrite this ODE using prime notation as follows. Let's first determine the order of the ODE. Scanning the ODE, we see that we have a third derivative and a first derivative. The highest of these two is a third derivative, so this ODE is a third order ODE. Next, let's check to see if this ODE is linear. Let's first check to make sure that the dependent variable and its derivatives are linear in form. The third derivative is raised to the power of 1, so this derivative is linear in form. Looking at the first derivative, we see that it's being raised to the power of 4. This automatically makes this ODE nonlinear, so we don't need to go through the rest of the steps to determine if the ODE is linear. So this equation can be classified as a third order nonlinear ODE. 
A common mistake that many students make is to use the exponents, in this case 4, to classify the order of the ODE. Remember, it's the highest derivative and not the exponent that determines the order of the ODE. So make sure you don't make this common mistake. Alright, let's try the next example. The quantity 1 minus y squared times the second derivative of y with respect to t plus t times the first derivative of y with respect to t plus y equals e to the power of t. Notice that this ODE has the variable t as the independent variable. Usually, when we have time as the independent variable, we can rewrite the differential equation by using dot notation, also known as Newton's dot notation, as follows. This is an alternative way of writing this ODE that has time as an independent variable. Alright, let's first identify the order of the ODE. Notice that we have a second derivative and a first derivative. The highest one of these is a second derivative, so this ODE is a second order ODE. Next, let's check to see if this ODE is linear. We start by making sure that the dependent variable y and its derivatives are linear in form. For this ODE, we see that this is the case. So now we go ahead and check if the products of the dependent variable and its derivatives are solely in terms of the independent variable t. For the second derivative, notice that the product is the quantity 1 minus y squared. This quantity contains the dependent variable y, which in turn is being multiplied by the second derivative. This automatically makes the ODE nonlinear. In the end, this equation can be classified as a second order nonlinear ODE. It's nonlinear because the product of the second derivative contains an expression in terms of the dependent variable y. Alright, let's try the final example. The fourth derivative of y plus 2 times y prime plus e raised to the power of y equals x, where y equals f of x. Once again, we have an ODE written using prime notation. We can also rewrite this ODE by using Leibniz notation as follows. Notice that when using prime notation, only the first three derivatives are labeled by using primes. Any higher order derivatives are labeled by using a superscript and close in parentheses, like this fourth derivative. This is why it's sometimes convenient to use Leibniz notation when dealing with ODEs that contain derivatives that are greater than 3. On that note, let's classify the order of this ODE. Notice that we have a fourth derivative and a first derivative. Don't confuse the 4 as an exponent. If it were an exponent, we would not enclose the 4 with parentheses. The greater of these two derivatives is a fourth derivative, so this ODE is a fourth order ODE. Next, let's check to see if this ODE is linear. First, we need to check that the dependent variable y and its derivatives are linear in form. Inspecting the ODE, we see that this is the case. Next, we need to check that the products of the dependent variable y and its derivatives are solely expressed in terms of the independent variable x. Once again, inspecting the ODE, we see that this is the case. The final step is to check if any transcendental functions are written solely in terms of the independent variable x. Notice that this ODE contains the transcendental function e raised to the power of y. This function is in terms of the dependent variable y. This makes the ODE nonlinear. If this function was written in terms of the independent variable x, then we would have had a linear ODE. So in the end, we can classify this equation as a fourth order nonlinear ODE. It's nonlinear because of the e to the y term. Alright, so this is the basic procedure you want to follow when classifying ODEs. Once you get more practice, you will immediately be able to classify the order of an ODE and determine whether it's linear or nonlinear in a matter of seconds. In our next video, we will go over a couple more challenging examples.